So let us start with this file system practical. We are going to start with our terminal into our Linux machine. So we can manage our disk and file systems even by the utilities provided to you that is just your disk utility. I'm just going to show you over here so that at least you will have an idea of the disk utilities generally you have. So you can see this is uh, the devices which is attached to my system. I have right now one hard disk here and it's on CD drive. This has some other, you know, hard disk which has by default attached into my uh, Linux operating system. So now I want to attach one more disk. So um, uh, I have already attached one disk. So just we need to synchronize and check whether it has been detected into our kernel or not. So I'll use I can use the f disk space hyphen l command so it's not showing me because I'm not a root user so a limited user cannot handle the administration task so I'm going to switch the user to the root and this is the password of my root now I have assigned here okay so I'm into root now now I'll give the same command f disk space hyphen l it will show me the list of disk I have so you can see it's showing me the list of disk I have into my system so it is showing me the first disk which is the SDA disk of your uh, near about 80 GB 80 to 90 GB and this is the partitions I have created on that uh, disk and also and also there is an other partition for the disk if we have it will show you those disk as well So the other disk is not detected. Just I'll reboot my machine and then we will be able to get this thing. So I'll just reboot it. So my system is restarted. Again, I'll move into the terminal. Okay, so I'm going to run the same command. Before that, I'll just log in at my root login, and then I'm going to run the command called as df space hyphen your f disk space hyphen l. So you can see there are two different disks which will be listed over here. You can also see it in page wise so that I can you can easily get the information so very first disk we have that is SDA which we have seen and the second disk we have now that is your SDP so SDA contains two different partitions while SDP contains no partitions into it and I want to uh, create partitions into SDP so uh, the same thing you generally get into the utility of your disk as well so you can check into the disk utility. Now you have two different disks. One is of 20 GB around and the uh, other is of uh, 86 GB around. So this two disks I have added into my machine. Now I want to uh, now create some partitions into the disk. So for creating the partition, we have to give the command called as fdisk. fdisk space slash dave slash the name of the disk. So right now the disk which I have connected which is a blank disk it contains the name SDP. I'll just keep the utilities enabled so that uh, you can even check it graphically. So this is the SDA and this is your SDP. So I am uh, going to create partitions into it. So till now this is a completely blank hard disk with a known file system it is showing you. So I'm going to create the partitions and defining the file systems into it. So uh, now I'm going to move into the fdisk slash dev slash sdp. Now it's asking me like uh, you are going to create and you know we are going to manage your disk. So if you require some help, you can press M for getting the help so that it will show you the key letters we can use for creating, managing the partitions. Now very first, let me check the number of partitions we do have existing into the you know hard disk. So for that, we can also give the command 
or you can use the key letters P so for printing the partition table so I'll check there is uh, no partition has been created as of now so for that I want to create a new partition so I'll be creating it by N so I'll use N and it is asking me which kind of partitions we have and uh, which we want to create actually so generally there are three types of partition which we can use in or create into MS DOS partition table or we can say MBR partition table they are three that is your primary extended and logical partitions so ultimately in MBR you can create only four partitions either three primary one extended or your out of four of four you can use as a primary or same thing we can also use uh, an extended partition so extended partition can be only one but if I want to create more than four partitions like as I tell uh, as I already told you that um, it can accept only four partitions so what I'll be doing is uh, I'll be creating three primary one extended and into that I'll be creating number of partitions the number of partitions will be creating under the extended they will be logical so this type of partitions you can explore over the internet you will find the more rules of it so right now uh, ultimately we need to find like there are four partitions uh, which are free partitions out of that we can either create primary or extended but again there is a restrictions extended can be created only once means three primary one extended or four primary zero extended we can create so maximum partition which we can create is only four so for example I'm going to create the partition now which uh, the par primary partition I have selected so that I can create a primary partition partition number it's asking me for like uh, what will be the name of your number of the partition I will be defining uh, the default one that is one and uh, it is asking you for this sector the hardest sector from where you are going to create the partition so we won't come to know from which sector to which sector I'll be creating 20 GB of partition so in spite of that we'll skip it and uh, we are going to define our value from here so it is asking for the first and last sector but I do not want to define anything into the sectors so I can go for defining into the size so for defining into the size you just need to add the plus sign in front of it so this addition sign then this size and then what uh, the size you want like whether you want to define it in kg uh, or kbs mbs or gbs so I'll just define as plus the size I want to define for the first partition is of for example 5 GB so I'll define 5 G and hit enter so we have created with the first partition it's showing you the notification the partition one of type Linux of size 5 GB is set let us check for it you can see by pressing P I am able to create the or check the partition which I have created so automatically it will take your you know, cycle or the sectors of your Hard disk. So the sector got started from 2048 and it gone ended on this sector for creating um, about 5 GB of partition. So this is what we have. Next again, if I'm going to uh, create a new partition, so I'll create a new partition by pressing N. Uh, right now I'm going to create an extended partition. So I'll give E and um, you can define the name of the partition or the number for the partition. I'll define the 2 itself again first sector I'm going to skip and I'm going to add the partition for my extender as 10 GB done let us check the partition has been created or not yeah it is created so it is showing you this is the extended file system and for different kind of file systems we have different IDs right so same way we can also create the partition now again for creating the partition I'll press N now it's asking me whether you want to create a primary or a logical so as I said you can create only one extended it won't ask you for creating the new extended partition now because already you have used it right so now either I can create uh, one or two multiple primary partitions that is uh, two part primary partitions or I can go on creating the logical partitions and the logical partition will start numbering the uh, partitions from five so as of now we have seen we have created two partition and it got number as one and the other number as two but now if I create a logical partition which generally gets created inside the extended partition so extended partition is of 10 GB so I can create the partition 
max to max of 10 GB, not more than 10 GB. Like if I try doing it, I cannot, right? So it's showing you amount of range. So I'll create it of 2 GB. Hit enter and look at, let us check into print table. Now you can see here even the logical partition has been created and it's by default created from file and we cannot change it you know and it won't ask you to change the number while creating a logical partition so by default it will restart creating from file onwards so this is how generally we create the partition we have created a primary partition extended partition and your logical partition now let us check which are the type of file systems we do have into the Linux operating system for checking the file systems and for getting the menu help we can also press M now here you can see for to check the file system type or the list of uh, no, partition types we have, we can go for pressing L. So L will show you all the file system types we have, like FAT, FAT16, the different file systems you generally use into the day-to-day -day life, right? So by default, when you create the partition, you get 83. When you create the swap partitions, you will get 82. When you create the LVM partitions, you get by default 80. And then uh, if you create an extended partition, for extended partition, you generally have this, that is five. So this is what the file systems are. Like if I want to, you know, change the file system of my partition, I can also do it from here. Like if I want to make my partition as NTFS, so I can also use NTFS volume set by giving the or changing the partition type to 86. Let us check. We have these partitions created. I am going to change the last partition type to 86. That is my NTFS partition. Just give T command to change the partition type. T, which partition you want to change? I want to change partition number 5 and uh, define the codes so that is the 83 which is the code you need to remember so I'm going to use 86 so 86 was the code for your NTFS right so I'm using 86 and hit enter now you can find here this has changed to NTFS right so this way you can change your partition you can create your partition you can change the type whenever you require if I want to make it default 83 I can got it so this is how generally we change the file systems and different kind of file system we have into the Linux and which it allow you to create now once you have done with that all these changes which I have made was temporary now if I want to make the changes permanently over the partition table I need to press W W means write and quit if I give Q so Q means quit without saving so I want to write all these things into my partition table of your partition, uh, your disk slash sdave slash sdb. That's the reason I'm going to write it down. So once you have written it, you can check into the fdisk space hyphen l. And I just now I want to check my disk sdb, which is located into the device. It is showing you which are the three partitions you have created. And sometimes if you do not get any entries, you can also give the command called as part probe, which will probe your partitions and you it updates your kernel with the new partition table. Part probe. Right, so it will update your partition table completely. Correct. So either if it is giving you it is busy, it cannot write, it's okay. It generally writes it. Okay. So now if I want to use that particular partition which I have created, so we know we have created the three partitions which is listed over here. Correct, I want to use sdb5. I cannot directly move into the dev slash sdb5 because it is not, sorry, sdb5 because it is not a directory, not an MNF file. So it won't take you to, you to access this file in such a way, right? And if I try using vs slash dev slash 
as db why I won't. It will create a new file in spite of it. Now how will be using it? Very first what you need to do is you need to format that particular partition by using the different file system type or called as ext3 or the latest one which we have that is ext4 sdb5. Format it. Once you have formatted it, it will show you everything has been done or if it contains some error it will prompt you with the error as well. Like for example if I use 6 it will give you error like there is no such file or directory right so I have already formatted it by using the mkfs hyphen t means type of your file system I have used that is ext4 slash dev slash sdb5 I have defined so it is formatted so in the number of time you will format you can format it but only if you have kept some data you have to be you know ensure that your data which you have into it it's not an important data because it will be flushed out completely so once you have done with the formatting what I can do is I can you know, mount this partition as we have also discussed during the slide itself like mounting we need to locate this particular devices. So for that I am going to create a directory into the MNT with the name sqlin for example and I want to mount slash tape slash sdb5 into mnt sqlin. So it is mounted if it is no error and if there is an error means there is a you know something wrong with your file system or the partition now we can move into your cd slash mnt slash c colon and you can find a lost bus found directory once you find it you come to know that it is really mounted so again we can check from the command called as df space hyphen h it will show you the number of drives which are mounted at which location so this all are by default mounted and this is a drive which I have mounted right now so it is showing me this is the mounted drive this is source and this is the destination now if I want to work into this particular partition I'll move into the MNT C colon and I'll start working right I'll create a directory mkdir a b c d whatever I want I can create same way if I want to create some touch files one file two and so on right I can create the files as well so this I have created into the partition it's actually we come to know like we are working into the directory but actually we are working into the partition we are saving all the data into the partition now if I want to you mount it means I want to uh, remove this device from the mounting I can give the command you mount either the source or either the destination location so I'm going to define slash tape slash so once you have done with that you can see it has been removed completely right and suppose for example later on you again want it to be mounted you can also mount it again by giving the same command into the and one more thing before we move ahead let us check whether uh, do we have any data into MNT nothing right so for that I'm coming out and again I'm going to mount slash tape slash sdb5 into MNT and z colon move into the slash MNT slash z colon check for your files we have recovered all the things because this was saved into the partition not into this directory so this is how generally we create a partitions we mount the partitions and you move you mount the partitions into the Linux operating system so you can create your own partitions you can you know format it you can create you know manage it you can save the data into it by using this command so this is what we have seen how we can manage your file systems into the Linux operating systems by defining the different commands we have seen. So into the next video we are looking forward on the user and management and how to manage their entries, how to create the users into the Linux operating systems into the next video. So keep watching.